Hello and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers video. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these really lovely square rotated landscapes in the style of this guy here, Louis Gerudo, and in particular his series of works called Departed that he produced in 2013. You can see he's got part of the landscape and cut squares rotated. You could do this in real life with a pair of scissors and a scalpel, pole. And you could cut them out and turn them around, or you could do them virtually and digitally, that I will show you in a minute. You can see some of his examples here. So if we go back to Photoshop, here's one I've made earlier. You can see it's got five layers, and in each layer it's got different size squares. So to do this, we're going to need a photograph. I've used a seascape that I took down at the beach the other morning. And you can see the lovely sunrise here. What we need to do now to make it a lot easier is to go to view and look for show and grid. Once we've got a grid, you can see the grid fits the space. If your grid doesn't quite fit where you want it to, you can crop the image to make it fit the grid how you want it to. Then we're going to use the rectangular marquee tool. We've used this before. And I'll show you how to line it up with the grid. So we see the little crosshair. We find the corner of the grid. And we draw a box all the way across to a nice even number of squares. In this case, I'm doing five squares on my grid. And I leave it to start flashing. Now, I've shown you in the past we do layer masks. We could also do copy and paste. And today I'm going to teach you about Control J, which does copy and paste in one move. So if we press on the keyboard control J, you will see that immediately I have my cut out square. So it's pressing two buttons. Just press control J rather than control C, control V. Now, once I've got this square cut out, I want to cut out another square. So I will hide the background layer and I will, I could go for one equal square, there but that might make the image a bit small so I'm going to instead I'm going for some of the smaller grids and then draw a box out this size and remember we're making responses we're not doing direct copies of the artist's work so it doesn't have to be an identical copy once I've got that I make sure I've got layer one selected and it is light gray to prove that I'm working on it I press Control J again and it will copy out that square I then need to get one more square, so if I hide that one, and I'm going to go for the bigger grid this time, so I'm going here, draw my grid down to the corners there, make sure I've got it on layer 2 this time, and it's light grey, press Control J again, and now I've got layer 3, hide layer 2, and do one more this time, again using that same scale so going in for the inner part of the grid like so press ctrl j one more time and you can see i now have four layers and the background now the next part of the illusion to create this effect so i've got my cutout squares i've got my background if i go to view and show and click on grid again i'll make get rid of the grid which is great at the moment, you can't see anything happening because they're all the layers just cut out. They haven't been moved. So if I click on layer one, and then I go over to edit in the edit menu, transform, and then I want to go rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. So we're going backwards in time almost. We click on this, and that layer will be turned around 90 degrees to create this effect. We click on layer two, and we go to edit. Transform, rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, and it joins up with that one. And then we go edit, transform, rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, and it now turns around so it's upside down. So you can see already the image is starting to take shape. We go to layer 3, and we do the same thing here. We go edit, transform, counterclockwise, and edit. Transform counterclockwise and then edit transform counterclockwise, and there is our image. So you can see we have the original image in the middle, and it looks like it's been framed by these 
rotation. So it's gone around effectively 360 degrees, which is a beautiful technique. Um, we could experiment with different ways of interpreting this. We could add the background as a black and white layer. So to show you how to do that, we click on the background. We'd go to image adjustments and we'd click black and white. Click OK. And then we'd have the color in this part and the black and white background, which is quite a nice version for it. We could alternate the colors in here. We might also do some adjustments to the brightness, etc., of each layer. I've shown you how to do that in other videos, so I won't talk to you about that today. But you can see this is the one with the um, color background, and this is the one with the black and white background, and you can decide which one you prefer. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed watching today's video. If you have, obviously pop over and hit that subscribe button, and enjoy some of the other videos that I've been creating lately, all about how to do things in Photoshop. Okay, thank you for watching, and goodbye.